Well, thank you, Rex. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, in particular, um, uh, th thanks for all coming here uh, to spend your first couple of days uh, in Bethesda to uh, give us advice, but also to interact and do the kinds of things we want to have that come out of this meeting. Particular thanks to a small group of you who ended last week uh, in a different hotel, actually up in, uh, up in Gaithersburg at another NHGRI meeting. So ending one week, some flying to the other coast and then ping-ponging right back here for to this morning. So I certainly we're very appreciative of those people. We've packed a lot of meetings uh, for the Institute into, into December for a variety of reasons. Um, so I'm going to keep my comments brief, and I'm actually not even going to show any slides. I looked at the list of people who are going to be here, and many of you have heard me give talks in, in recent months, so I don't, you don't need to see the slides, nor do I really need to introduce you to any, in any serious way um, NHGRI's new strategic plan, which we published in, in February. Um, many of you were instrumentally important, in fact, in helping us put that uh, strategic plan together. Um, what I just wanted to do was to really amplify what Rex said, which r very much relates to the fact that NHGRI is very committed now to do everything we can do to accelerate progress in, in the development of genomic medicine as an area of, we think, incredible importance uh, for medicine more broadly. Um, we are learning a lot. This is, uh, much of this is new to us. Um, it's actually new for the field. Um, we're doing everything we can to stimulate uh, discussions and strategic thinking and also to help us figure out the best ways that NHGRI uh, could be uh, serving a major role in, in a facilitative role in the field. We're, we're doing lots of workshops. You've heard about that. I was just making a quick list. In the general arena of genomic medicine, broadly defined, we did, a, I think, last um, it was uh, last December we did a, a workshop on newborn screening. Sometime this spring, I think maybe April, we did a workshop uh, looking at genomics and electronic health records. You heard about the, the workshop we just had last week, Thursday and Friday, around clinical actionable variants, quote unquote. Um, we're having, it's, it's a slightly uh, a, a different topic, but we're having a meeting we're sponsoring along with some other NIH institutes in San Diego at the end of this week around sickle cell disease and new genomic opportunities that uh, might be applied uh, for looking at that important disease. Um, and then there's others that are either planned or in the planning stages. I'll also tell you that in addition to the workshops that we're putting on, often in partnership with other NIH institutes, I can't emphasize enough how NHGRI is really being once again looked at at NIH for providing some strategic um, advice, uh, strategic leadership. Um, in, in genomics, in particular clinical applications. Lots of institutes are getting into genomics, obviously, but in particular, there's just so much interest in thinking about many of these very uh, generic sets of issues about just the first time doing things um, in, in clinical practice using genomics, the disease-specific aspects, the institutes know how to deal with. It's, it's more of these challenges associated uniquely with genomics. So we are looked at a lot for providing guidance and giving advice, and so we look now to our community, including all of you, to help us uh, formulate our thinking and uh, to then give the advice. So that was the reason why, as Rex said, we recognized uh, during the tail end of our strategic planning process that, you know, genomic medicine wasn't way out there. Genomic medicine actually was starting. It's starting in little pockets in various places. And we thought, wow, we should get to these groups together and start learning from them, also maybe getting them to interact and giving us ideas on how we can facilitate an enlargement of those interactions, increasing opportunities, and that's why we set up this series of meetings, of which this is now the second of what we aim to be a series. But in addition, we recognize that this is critically important for the Institute, and so one of the things that we wanted to do was to make sure that this became a formal part of our advisory process, and so we have an advisory council. I, if I counted. Let's see, we have Howard's here from our council and Pearl's here from our council. Jeff just finished his stint on our council. Rex is a member of our council, and I don't know if there's anybody else. Uh, Dave Valley is a member of our council. So what? Just you just went off when Jeff was. So significant, significant um, representation of either current council members or future council members. And that's very important for us, and in fact, that is why just at the last council meeting, we actually established a new working group of our council, a working group on genomic medicine. That will, um, that will carry forth in a very regular way interactions uh, between forums like this and then back giving reports and discussions to our advisory council. 
So this particular meeting, for example, the first meeting Jeff was, uh, Ginsburg was heavily involved in organizing. Rex has played a, a larger role in this particular one, but it really is sort of, uh, sort of a, it'll be a continual basis of our council members um, being involved in these kinds of planning meetings, other meetings, and then strategically interacting in a fashion that engages our council to help us think about it. So what are we specifically, uh, why, what, what's NHGRI really looking for at this particular meeting? It, it is a hard time. I mean, one of the things, I don't, you read the newspaper. We don't really know what's going to happen budgetarily. And I don't want to start the meeting on a downer, but it does reflect the fact that this is not a moment in time where we can come up with 15 new initiatives and instantly go off and fund them. It's just not going to happen. So we have to be smarter with the resources we have, and we have to do everything in our power to sort of make the most out of the opportunities that are out there. And then we will sprinkle when we can uh, funding when, when it is available in ways that we obviously are already doing. But we really want to do everything we can to stimulate this area, um, e even if it doesn't mean directly uh, funding the work ourselves. The other thing we can do, which is exactly what we're doing, is that we can be conveners. And uh, we can hold forums like this that get people together that can end up uh, empowering collaborations in fashions that may not happen if we didn't actually get people in the same room. And then when I was talking to Terry uh, Manolio about this and about the, 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 the kinds of things we hope to come out of a meeting like this, she said, you know, part of what we're trying to do, we're trying to be matchmakers here. We're trying to put groups together. And I, at first I said, yeah, like a yenta, thinking of my Yiddish uh, background. And then, ah, then I realized that's actually, that's the wrong word. It's actually a common mistake. People think that yenta means matchmaker. It's chatkin, is the, by the way, is the, is the Yiddish word for matchmaker. So that's what we're doing here. We're basically being chatkins. We are trying, uh, in, among everything else, what we're trying to do is to see what we can facilitate by, by exposing the nascent efforts in genomic medicine uh, to each other, and then think about things that might grow out of, of such interactions. And that's why a lot of these workshops have been designed to have materials prepared in advance that everybody's describing what they're doing so everybody can be thinking about it when they get in the room, and it also tailors the way we put the agenda together. So that's what I wanted to say. Again, I appreciate you being here. I expect it's going to be a very uh, fruitful couple of days. And uh, I will be here uh, throughout. I have to slip out at least once for one thing I have to do. But otherwise, I, I plan to listen intently uh, and intensively uh, to, to hear what I can uh, learn and how that might influence what the Institute does in the coming months. So I'm turning this over to you now, Terry. Sorry.